It's always extra challenges that you don't expect. Something went right today. We have our social visa for Indonesia. Because I overstayed my visa, we didn't really have the option of waiting for a weather window. Day number three of our sail to Japan. Needing to leave Indonesia as our visas were expired, I received grieving news from back home that a family member had passed. Heading to sea on an emotionally challenging 400 nautical mile upwind south Dili Timor Leicester, things became more stressful as a lump in my breast that I discovered earlier started to cause pain. After five days at sea, we arrived at Dili and I boarded the first flight back to Australia to seek the medical assistance I needed. I got to spend quality time with my mum, played golf with my dad and visited my brother and friends in Adelaide whilst we patiently waited for the doctor's word. Meanwhile, Yosh and Mali kept busy on Nanji for my return. After a long three weeks away, I was given the all clear and returned back to Nanji to prepare for our onward journey. We needed to organise new visas for Indonesia and collect our new lithium batteries. <laughs> We found out that uh, the officials treat you differently according to what you're wearing. So I've uh, dug out my old business attire. We're going to get a social visa so we can stay in Indonesia for uh, about six months. Sweet. Something went right today. We have our social visa for Indonesia. So this is a 60 day social visa. So we've got 60 days and we can renew it up to four times. So we can stay in Indo for six months. Whilst Benita had gone back to Australia, I had arranged for an important and an exciting upgrade to be delivered to Nanji and Dili. But not everything is as easy as it sounds. But that vessel over there contains our lithium batteries. The collecting parcels in other countries is always interesting. There's always that language barrier and the fact that it's come from overseas and there's always extra challenges that you don't expect. The logistical company has printed the wrong address on top of our bill of lading, for, uh, so that's just the information that we get from the ship. Needing to sort out the mistake in the paperwork and now the new $800 fine occurred for wrong documents, I spent days running around the city in taxis and BMO buses trying to solve this debacle. With Benita now back in Dili, we could at least do many little jobs to get Nanji ready to leave. Leicester is really dry, it hasn't rained the whole time we've been here. Uh, so we haven't been able to collect water and lucky enough these young lads... Dominguez! Yeah! yeah. Uh, they've brought us water. What's eight times two? Sixteen. Sixteen. Sixteen big ones. They use US currency here. Timor Leicester's a, a, new, a new nation since they broke away from Indo and they adopted the US currency. So we use US bucks around here. Mung being Michigan. Did you like that? Here at the local market on the foreshore, everything's like two dollars or one dollar, so it's really cheap. And it's got four avocados for one dollar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I hadn't bought a lot of any new clothes for a long time and um, on my recent trip through Bali, I spent $150 and got um, a whole new wardrobe. The clothes in here were starting to really smell, so I'm just cleaning it out. I've got my bottle here. It's got uh, tea tree oil and eucalyptus oil and a little bit of disinfectant in there as well. So I've got a lot of clothes that are still good that I don't wear and that I will never wear, so I'm going to give them away. Um, it's a pretty expensive place to live here and people are very poor, so just going to give what you can. Okay, so here you go, this is for you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. See ya. Oh. Our fridge basically died on Benita's birthday and so I need to get in there and get into the panels. But when I first installed it and I put all this nice beautiful carpentry up here, I thought I was doing the right thing and I left the panels clear. Except there's two screws I can't get to inside of the panel here to pull that back one off. So I've had to pull this carpentry out and I'll try to rip this out so I can get to those two screws to then get inside the fridge. Got the screen out. I have no idea how a fridge works by the way, so... It's broken, I can only make it more broken. Unfortunately it looks like I can't fix it. It's without... it's out of my capabilities. The error lights flash saying there's a problem with the fan and a problem with the compressor, but I figured that if I pulled it all apart and I got into all the wiring and everything, I might be able to reset it or see if there's any sort of fault that's causing that fault. But 
everything's Mickey Mouse. I've pulled it all apart. I've cleaned everything. There's no corrosion. So we can't wait to get out of Dilly. I feel really bad for Yosh as you probably know his favourite thing in the whole world is surfing and it's, it's getting towards the end of the surf season now in Indonesia and we need to be up in Malaysia by December and so that's about 1,500 nautical miles away so we've got a long journey ahead of us. It's just cutting all this time waiting for uh, the packages is cutting into his surfing time. It's been pretty hard for him I think. He hasn't been able to surf as much as he'd hoped off of the boat. So uh, Indonesia was his time to go surfing and it looks like he's only going to get maybe one or two weeks if we're lucky. And that's all depending on the swell as well. Lithium day is upon us. This is a huge day for us. Power affects our lives dramatically. You know, I had the worst batteries for a very long time. It's gonna give us a better quality of life. <laughs> Look at that! To learn more about our lithium batteries and the installation, check out the short mini series we made on our website. After all the hassles, we finally had our new lithium batteries on board. We did however need to depart immediately as the long five weeks in Dili meant I had overstayed another visa and needed to leave ASAP. Today is a big day, we're finally leaving Dili. We're a little bit nervous that perhaps the motor wouldn't start but she's running, she's actually purring. Yosh is just putting the tender up on the davits. It's only a 200 nautical mile sail to Indonesia and we're expecting pretty nice weather. I'm a little bit nervous, I haven't sailed for maybe six weeks. Yeah, so nervously excited, you know, excited to be sailing again. We thought we were going to catch a fish this afternoon because we trawled over a fisherman's hotspot, but it ended up being uh, unfruitful as we have no wind and we're traveling less than one knot. So sailing or just rolling around, you decide. The sunsets here are beautiful. And it's just, it's just so great to be on the water again and moving again. Pretty good at catching these things now. I thought it was a wahoo. Man, you don't go fast enough to get wahoo. Because I overstayed my visa in Dilly, we didn't really have the option of waiting for a weather window. We kind of just collected our batteries, hoisted sails, and ran out of there. But it means that uh, the, the wind has changed a little bit from the dead southeast east that's been blowing consistently for the past five weeks and it's gone around to the south at the bottom of Timor here is real southerly so it's kind of pushing out the bottom of Timor and then heading west so it's like a south southwest and we're trying to come down that exact direction so we basically had to do an upwind passage for the last two days Last night in the lighter winds, uh, it was like three in the morning. We we're just slowly sailing along at like two knots and we we're trying to do a bit of ship dodging, but we didn't have enough speed to turn Nanji, tack Nanji into the wind. So we had to turn the motor on to just push us around to get through the tack so we can get out of the way of this big ass ship that was coming. But during that time, we turned the motor on and we went pumping out water. So we only had it on for like five minutes just to get us around the corner, but we weren't cooling down. So just had to have a bit of inspection to see what's going on. That's super loose, so I think I'll just tighten that up. I reckon that's just slipping on the raw water pump, which is this one here. So I'll just tighten that up and we'll give it a go. Day number three of our sail to Kapang. We've been sailing upwind in some very comfortable degrees of uh, around 20 to 30 degree lean. It's been a bit difficult to move around the boat and uh, do everything, but 
this we're making brown. And we're going to Kapang. The island of Timor is separated into two countries. So there's Timor Leste and then there's also West Timor. And West Timor is a part of Indonesia and the capital city of that is Kapang. And that's where we're going to check into the country so we can island hop our way up. We've got a solid 25 knots on the beam. We've got about one meter seas, uh, 40 miles to go, which means we should arrive in the dark, of course. Pop the pick. <laughs> so I timed that belt this morning, but I got a bit sidetracked and I was tired, so I went and had a sleep and I kind of forgot about it. But I thought, oh, just before it gets dark now, I might turn the motor over to see if it was just that belt. <sighs> Lesson learned. Probably should have checked that straight away. So I don't think it is that belt. I can't get into the sea strainer, so I can't tell if it's actually a blockage in the sea strainer. But I take the hose off the back of the sea strainer and water keeps splurting out, so I kind of think that it's not that. So working through that up to the raw water pump, I can't quite see inside properly to see the impeller. It looks like there's a little bit of a dicky spot there um, on one of the blades, but I can't really see much. So I think I'm just going to have to take the whole pump out. But I'll at least take the belt off and then see if I can't free spin it and look in there to see if I can see if the impeller's all stuffed. Oh, lucky that was an easy fix in the end. Just had to prime the line properly. So I dropped the, the hose off the bottom of the raw water pump and it seemed alright. So I took the belt off, I could manually spin and see the impeller was okay. So we just had to prime the line better. Marley's had a bath, so he smells nice and clean for the quarantine. Did you wash him with that insecticidal soap? Yeah, but I wash him with the other soap afterwards because that insecticide soap stinks. We just got to anchor and we went to start the motor and it's still not pumping water so we just tapped back out to sea again and Josh is going to try and get the water pumping through the motor again. Of course that's the case, you know, we're entering a new country, something has to go wrong. We have got some water but not as much as we're used to having. <laughs> See if that all wasn't frantic enough trying to, trying to anchor just under sail there with no because the motor was stuffed but we're getting a little bit of water coming through. But not much, we didn't have enough time to deal with it because we were just kind of trying to sail up to it. And it looks like one of the hoses had come off the motor where I'd primed. I'm guessing that's what's happened. I haven't been able to look at it yet, but the whole bilge is full of water. Yeah. Fernanda didn't know this. Oh, and then the anchor, then the anchor gets stuck, so we have it. Oh my god. And the anchor chain gets stuck and so we're just like, it is windy. Yeah. <laughs> the bilge is chockers. Oh my god, is the motor okay? Yeah, it didn't get that high. Whoops. Coming up next week on Sailing Nanji. You're all wet, you keep going. We're just out here trying to survive, you know? Yeah, we'll be fine. Keep moving and see what else this uh, beautiful island has to offer. We departed the island of Roti this afternoon. We've been sailing all our boat. And we're near a shipping lane and there's lots of ships around. This is pretty rowdy. 